Hello guys, welcome back to GoDisks. We are back with Go, uh, Doc 2. This is, we're actually now on Series 3 we are, so this is the next bank up there is. So yeah, David Tennant's second series, Russell, Davis, Russell T. Davis' third series, and it was broadcast in 2007. So let's not be around the bush, let's go for the episodes. I do think it's a good season it is. Oh, it's in the top five now, so yes, there we go. Um, so we'll probably with run Runaway Bride. I've, I forgot to mention Series 2 I did, but Runaway Bride, we'll start off. Um, it's a decent story, really. The Ragnos is a great creature, of course. Very big design, of course. Massive design. Really interesting spider-like, you know, massive spider thing. It's like, I didn't want, do you want to get the toy? <laughs> you know, like having, having that thing in the house, you know, it's like, no, no, no. I wasn't keen on it. Um, uh, but the creature design is pretty good. I mean, we introduced the Don Noble we do in this one, and she'd later become a main companion in series four. Uh, here, she's more, I don't know, she's not very much you expect, really. Like, you think, oh, Donna, she's, you watch series four, then you probably look at, you, you sort of like, you know, I think if you watch series four, you could probably say, you know, you know, she's a great companion. Very strong will, very just like balls in her, everything else. And here you come to this one. She's more, she, still, she has that sort of spike, you know, edge to her, we have a spike to her. Um, well, I think she's been more, I don't know, a bit more shouty in this one, a bit more like no nonsense and everything else, like a bit more, I just don't know, she doesn't, like she doesn't, she's disinterested really in a type of way. Um, then afterwards she sort of warms up again when helping the doctor defeat the Ragnos, of course, and also find out her, her husband actually was part of the plan, apparently, apparently and just, I uh, just, I just try to think, it's been a long time since I've watched it, but there we go. But it's an okay special, really. It's decent. I mean, it's more... The Doctor's involved, of course. There's a lot of good stuff. I mean, the taxi chase along the motorway with the TARDIS, that's brilliant. Same with the tag for the Robot Santas, which return from the Christmas Invasion. They tend to use them. Shame they didn't use them until, you know, for the next one. But Voyager the Damned has brilliant Heavenly Host. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the tag of the wedding... The reception of the wedding party, that's, again, pretty good stuff. So there's some good moments in this, of course. You know, it's just, like, action pat. Beautiful adventure, and the Doctor's more involved, of course. I think at this point, of course, he's missing Rose, so he's a bit mopey and just like, eh, you know, she done it better, she was like that, that sort of thing. I do like the idea. One thing I do like, of course, is when they're, they're actually, he's far extinguishing the TARDIS, I think afterwards, the chase, and they sat in this skyscraper and he puts his jacket around her to keep her warm, really. And it's, there's something really interesting about that, how it's filmed and everything, I do like that. Now we'll go to the actual series itself. So we've got Smith and Jones. Decent little story it is, you know. We got Freeman Ashman as Martha Jones. Uh, the Doctor gets a new suit as well, blue suit, which is fantastic with the red plimsolls, fantastic. We get to the Dudun and a Plasmavore, some like a name named Florence. Who we at least, you know, in you know, rather than, I always thought like with when this mentioned some stuff like that in SFX magazine back in the day, I did actually buy something like that. I think I don't, know if it, I don't know if I still have it or not, you know, but they have like a rough episode guide of, of story, of episodes as well. They talk about some stuff as well. Indeed. But I think some of them might be working titles or little bits and pieces. And I mentioned Blood Bloodsuckers or something like that. And then, and obviously the funny bit is she uses a, a plain striped straw to suck a victim's blood. That's, that is that is quite interesting. Rather have like big fangs or something, they have a massive tongue and you, and you know, and just suck the blood like a leech. She does it. She does it simply as a, you know, puts on like a tap, tap a straw on, on someone's neck and sucks it. That's good. The slabs are there as well. They're a bit, you know, generic really, but there we go. It's just a decent little fun story and a decent introduction to Martha Jones. Now next up we've got Shakespeare Code, which I don't mind actually. It's a decent pseudo historical. Some two times with Dean Ke Lennox Kelly as Shakespeare, which he's fantastic in it. You have the Carryites as well, which are pretty good. Again, they're still playing the witches as well, which is decent and nicely filmed as well. Some good stuff, you know, and also they filmed in the Globe Theatre as well, actually, so that's um, fantastic, that is, that's pretty decent. The only sort of downside is because it's written by Garth Roberts, so we skip that, of course, you know, but there we go. But it's a decent story, it is Shakespeare Code. Gridlock is next. Now, this is how it gets divided opinions to us. People say it's a really good story, people say it's one of the worst. I do actually like Gridlock, it's an interesting thing, like stuck here, traffic jam, pollution, it's in New Earth, New Earth, New Earth as well. It's the it's the final part of the trilogy is, because you start with the end of the world, New Earth, and Gridlock, so it's like that sort of trilogy. Never continued on with series four, actually, so, but, who knows. Decent little story, and it's pretty good. Um, the Mac are in it, of course, and yeah, I do like it. It's one of Russell T. Davis's favourite stories as well. Then we've got Daleks in Manhattan, Evolution of the Daleks, the first two part of the Turn of the Daleks, the Core Scarrow, that hybrid as well. Ugh. Um, I don't know, it's not really one of the best ones, really. 
You know, it's got Andrew Garfield in it as well, actually. You know, Andrew Garfield is one of his early roles, so keep a lookout for that. He's probably one of the best things out, best things in it, really. You know, obviously he does an American accent, but nah, it's not one of the best stories. Same goes for the last Life of Experiment, experiment as well. Mark Atis is in it, and he gets turned into like a weird scorpion creature thing, <laughs> and so it goes. It goes, you know, it ends up in the climax of church. Um, and also we introduced to Martha's family, the whole vote Saxon thing sort of raised its head. I just don't know, it's just like, eh, you know, it feels generic really. And then we've got 42, Chris Trimble's first contribution to Doctor Who. Um, it's a bit nice story actually, it plays on with the whole real time thing of 40, 42 minutes or so, you know. And the Doctor gets possessed by a sun, a sentient sun entity, whatever, that's pretty good. Also, you know, burn me, that's sort of a catchphrase it is, you know. The, the thing of the possession thing is quite, is quite bland and interesting but it's like it's almost like a welding mask and gloves and stuff and just reveals the virus and when he burns people to fries people death from the sunlight that's going on his body interesting but it's a good story i do think it's underrated that is human nature the family of blood fantastic one of the best two powers ever it's based on the original virgin new adventures novel by paul Connell, which was published in may i say five i do have the original novel i still need to read it at some point minor changes there's instead of the family instead of the uber tides it's the family of blood Instead of a cricket ball, it's the fob watch, and also combined rise because the original novel featured uh, the Seven Doctor and Bernie Summerfield. So there we go. But it's a nice old fly. Jessica Stevenson is brilliant as Joan Redfern. She's really good. The scarecrows are a nice touch as well. I mean, they need an added monster. I think Paul and Cornell and da Davy saw they set on some scarecrows, which Cornell think it's pretty nice. You know, it's it's mundane. It's it's in the field, but it's all can be scary at the same time. So it can be plain scary. You know, it's something you probably won't expect really. But the lovely designs, I love them actually because I have I think I have two figures of them. You know, the fact, character options figures, lovely design. I love those. Those, those, those. those are probably some of the best figures actually. You know, the scarecrows, really good stuff. And then we've got Blink. Not one of my favourites. I would say it's too overrated, you know. And the thing is, this bugs me the fuck out, it does. It's like, it's, you know, people say, you know, I'm, you know, like, if you want to introduce people to Doctor Who, go to Blink. Well, no, not really, because that's a terrible idea. Because the Doctor's barely in it. You need to characterise the Doctor. You know, you, you need someone that's fully, you know, to showcase the Doctor at, the be at his best. You know, just to help people in. Not something like a Twilight Zone-esque episode. As much as it's interesting, it's a companion light episode, that, you know, it's like, say, Budgie and everything. Karen Mulligan's in as well, and the Reaper Dentals are an interesting monster. Absolutely. But I just don't think, you know, I don't think it's the best way to go, like, to start Doctor Who. You know, in, you know, so people watch this, watch the story. No, don't do that. It's a fucking stupid idea. You know, just... Go on, you know, watch maybe Stuff and Rose, or just a man of like 11th Hour or something, or some standard episode with the Doctor in it, you know, see what you think of that, you know. Just don't go to Blink. Do not. It's like I, I mentioned with many people, they've only ever seen, ever seen Blink. You know, they don't, like, in terms of Doctor in their life, they've only ever seen, like, something like Blink. Fair enough, actually. That's all freed them out. Which is a good thing, actually. You know, you need something very creepy and scary. I mean, it's quite atmospheric, but, uh, no. No, I don't, I won't say it's a good starting point. I find it very overrated. People think Blink is God tier. I, f I don't. People think Heaven Sense is God tier. I don't either. So there we go. Um, Utopia is next. This is, part of, this is a free part thing. So Utopia, The Sound of Drums, The Last of Time Lords. It's a decent free part, actually. First part, we get introduced to Captain Jack's back. We've got Professor Yana, played by the wonderful Derek Jacobi, reveals to be later to be the master in human form. Um, brilliant ending cliffhanger on that thing jesus christ that's really good and we had john sim as well fresh off life on mars fame at that point he was in life on mars at that time i think he the second series came out same time as series three i think if i'm mistaken um so he was again successful he's done many things of course later on you know like ball dramas and stuff of course but he's successful um i find this master a bit manic of course it's meant to be a, a mirror a mirror version of the tenth doctor which is i can see why you know it's like a mirror image like but an evil version of the tenth doctor fair enough that's absolutely, you know, that could be good, but he plays up so much. Jesus Christ. The Talk Buffet were a good idea as well, actually, you know, because they're original monsters, they were the original idea for the Daleks, because they couldn't get the rights before Series 1, or during the production of Series 1, they couldn't get the Daleks. So, the end, so Russell T. Davis invented the Talk Buffet. Obviously, he used the idea anyway, just in this, you know, rather than waste material, he used that sparingly. So good, good on you, Russell. Good on you. They're actually creepy as hell, they are. You know, like, you know, and the shocking thing, of course, unless they're timeless, is. The open one is actually really revealed with the kid that Martha befriends in Utopia. And it's like, oh, it's the same kid, but his face is all slimy and messed up, everything. And they say killing is fun. And that's just terrible. I think, they, I think they kill it afterwards, I think, actually. Or pour a bullet in it. Ooh, bleak. 
it's a decent, it's a good file. The problem is that De Deus Ex Machina, when they say, you know, the flipper switch and say, oh, time's reversed. Time is reversed, and there we go. Um, so there we go. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Hmm. There we go, that's series three. I would say that's a good, it's a decent film like that, you know, it's a decent series, it's some top five, there's some good, there's some dodgy moments in it, but there are some good highlights in there as well, so it's a pretty good strong season, you know, and Free Management sort of is a nice breath of fresh air, it is, even though she pines for the Doctor, like a little love interest type thing, but obviously the Doctor pines for Rose, you know, tells me, oh Rose, Rose, we forget about that. Um, so that's it guys, series three, what are your thoughts on it? Thank you for watching. As always, see you for the next video. Goodbye.